each and every brother, sister, husband, wife here, the families that are represented here in this house. I pray, Lord God, that we could be what you have called us to be, that we would not be weak or, or uh, spiritually uh, anemic in your spirit, God, but I, I pray, Lord God, that we could be the men that you have called us to be. I pray, Lord God, that we could lead as you have called us to lead. I pray that we would have a spirit and a relationship with you that is pleasing in your sight. I, I pray, God, that you would anoint men to be the leaders of their home. Anoint men and use them and strengthen them and edify them to be what you have God ordained them to be, Lord. God, so in the end, we can look and we can say that Not praying 
the God when we know that we should be praying. We can sin to God by not being in the house of God when we know that we should be in the house of God. We can sin by not speaking and not protecting someone against the acts of the adversary. So I think that one of the greater sins that took place here is not just the act of partaking of that sat back silently. Adam's problem was he didn't stand up, he didn't speak up, and he didn't leave his family. When God came searching for this couple that had taken humanity from the original state of perfection, the, the scripture says that he called out for Adam. Right, right. What happened? Adam, where are you? Right. Adam, what went wrong? Right. Adam, what did you do? Right. Adam, what did you allow to happen? Right. God came calling out for Adam. Right. Yes, he sinned first, but God held Adam accountable for the actions of his family. My heartbeat today is going to be a call for men with a resounding question. Men, where are you at? Adam, what are you doing? It's time to be a man. It's time to lead your family unto the things of God. God is going to hold you accountable for how you lead your family. Malachi 2 and Proverbs 2 tells us that marriage is a covenant. I hear men get excited and they shout and they will dance when you say things like, man is the head of the house. <laughs> when you see scripturally speaking, what it means is every covenant, every covenant in the scripture, it has a head, a head of the covenant. Within a marriage, I mean, it is the head of this covenant. 1 Peter 3, Colossians 3, Ephesians 5, 1 Corinthians 14, 1 Corinthians 11, all state that the man is the head of this covenant. Now, men, before you start shouting, amen, understand, the head does not mean you are greater, you are better, you are supposed to be domineering within this covenant of marriage, but what it means is there is a greater responsibility, there is a higher level. Are you leading? Are you protecting? Are you providing? Are you praying and guiding your family as the head of your home? Or is the wife the one that's carrying this spiritual weight for your family? It's time to be a man. It's time to be a man. You show me a home where there's always chaos and confusion. I'll show you a father or a husband that has not taken upon his spiritual responsibility as a man of the home. Man, it's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. Show me a woman that is always gossiping and backbiting. And I'll show you a husband that needs to stand up and be a man. Show me children that are disrespectful, cursing, living every other way. I'll show you a man that needs to stand up and get ahead of his home. Let me just say, just because you can shave and make babies doesn't mean you're a man. You need to be a man. You need to be following after God's heart. 
Your children are afraid of you. Your wife is intimidated by your presence. You're not a man. I know some men that would never hit a woman, but their mouth sings a different song. When you learn to control yourself, I don't understand. If you can't control yourself, if you can't bridle your own spirit, why would you even think that you can have the responsibility of a wife, let alone children? Brothers, if we can paint this flesh, if we can conquer this old man, if, if we can be the man that God wants us to be, we can live victorious. We can have a happy home. We can have a happy wife. We can have a happy life. We can have happy children. This is going to sound odd coming from a pastor, but men, you're the pastor of your home. Contentiousness, crying, and why? 
plays a man like a marionette plays a puppet. Oh, no. 
emotional connection with the wife. There's no emotional connection with the children. And then secondly, there's success and status steward. You know, he's a guy that says, I've got this, I've got that, I've reached the top of the corporate ladder, I've got all this money in the bank, I've got the Rolex, I've got, I've accomplished in his identity as a man is defined by what he has done, what he owns, what he has accomplished, and it has nothing to do with who he really is. Then there's Maniac B. Marty. <laughs> this is the guy that thinks you're a man because you can hit the hardest. You can belch the loudest. And you stink the most. <laughs> I'm a man. 